In this video, I'm going to walk through the process of voxel painting. This is a new um, feature that came to 3D Coat not too long ago, and um, it's actually really amazing. I've just been playing around with it, and I figured I'd make a video and, and share that with, with others. So the way it works is um, when you get started with 3D Coat, you're going to want to jump directly into the voxel sculpting space. And for this example, I'll just pick a basic cube. Um, I'll squash this cube a bit. Like that, maybe I'll make it a little larger. Say something like that. And uh, we're going to want to up res or, or we want to increase the density of the voxels as we're because as we're painting, we're not painting on UV space. We're painting directly on to the voxels, which the resolution is going to help. Um, the more resolution you have, the more detail your texture is going to um, come through. So let's go ahead and up that a bit. We, okay, this might be good. So we'll just go ahead and apply. And let's see how many polys. Okay, so we've got a million polys. That's not bad. Um, why don't we start there? So now that we have the object, that's a voxel object, we're going to jump directly into the paint room. And we're going to apply some, some material. So maybe we'll just start off with a stone material. And we'll just, we'll work the way we would work if we were in the regular paint room on a UV object. Um, Go ahead and increase the uh, texture detail. Um, okay, something like that will be good. And um, now, uh, as you see here, I'm in the fill tool, and you can see that there's this voxel paint depth. Uh, by default, um, I have it set to two. You can change whatever your default is by navigating to your preferences. And under, I think it's brushing, yeah. So under brushing, there's this voxel paint depth, and you can see I have it at two. You can you can default it to anything you want. Um, just be careful not to default it to a very high number because it will uh, slow down some calculations as it's as it's working with those um, larger values. Okay, so we'll stay with two, and I will apply that to the layer. And say yes. All right, so now we have our top layer. I call this call this outer layer, I guess. Uh, now we have this for our outer layer. I'm going to create a multi-layered um, uh, example here. So we'll go ahead and create another layer that's underneath the outer layer. So I'll create a layer. I'll create a new layer, and we'll call this um, inner layer. Great. The outer outer layer is going to be fairly thin. Uh, I have it set to a value of two. In fact, you know what? Let, let's increase this. I'll make this. A value of four, um, and I will apply that again. I just want to exaggerate this a little bit so you can actually see um, what's happening. Okay, so that's applied. Now we'll jump to the inner layer and we'll pick a different material. Let's go ahead and hide the outer layer so we can see what that's going to look like. Just trying to find something that's going to be noticeable as we start carving into it. Yeah, we could do we can do this. So it's brighter than the other one. So we'll go ahead and apply that. But this time, uh, we're going to go deeper. Uh, because we don't want it to be the same at the same thickness, it might it might not be noticeable as you're carving. So I'm going to jump from the four and I'm going to Jump, make that 10. And 
and I'll go ahead and fill this layer. Make this smaller here. Okay. There we go. Now we've got our um, inner layer. Why don't we start with that first? <clears throat> so now I will um, show all the layers and now start to reveal uh, the layers that we've just created. Uh, but for that, we need to jump back into the sculpt room because we're going to be working in voxels. And um, in the new uh, releases of 3D Coat, when this was introduced, uh, they've added to, to the uh, clay engine, um, they've added these parameters now are part of the tool options for the clay engine. And that's going to give you this act as box hide. And if you don't know what box hide is, it's, um, it's essentially you're painting, you're erasing your voxels, but they're not gone. They're just visually, you're removing them, but you can always bring them back. So, so it's, it's kind of a non-destructive way of working if you're trying to shape an object by carving parts of it away. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of that. Along with this Vox hide, they've also added all the, um, the brush parameters and options, which is really amazing. Now you can add jitter and um, you, you can decide whether you want to use the, a brush alpha with your Vox hide or, um, or use the default uh, square texture that it comes with. By default, usually it's not using an alpha. Um, I make sure that it's enabled because I do like to vary up the, the pattern. But let's go ahead and start playing around with this a bit. Go ahead and grab this brush. And now as I start brushing, let me strengthen that a little bit. Now as I start brushing, you'll start to see the other texture start to get revealed underneath it. See that? If I start wearing away the corners, you start to reveal your textures based on depth. Now, the voxels by default, if I were to hide these two materials, is this color right here. And so that means that when you paint through your, uh, the materials that you've added from your paint room, so your layers, um, you will end up with this default material. So what you want to do from here is you can actually just apply a shade, not a smart material, but your shaders. If you apply your shader, that will be, um, that will fill all the voxels with that color, but now your layers will sit on top of that. So now as I start painting and I go through that inner layer that we've created, I will hit the core color, which is whatever you decide you wanted that to be. And you can change that at any time. I can change that to all these different materials and it'll it'll just affect the um, core color of the surface or, or object. So let's see if I were to cut into that you can start to see those layers. There's just so much you can do with this. It's it's incredible. Like you can really create like I, I just think about creating ground planes now where I can have mud and rocks and stone and whatever materials I want um, and can vary that up. Or if you're going to create something like um, a wood table and you want to have scratches so the maybe the top stain or, or lacquer finish gets scratch, scratched and you want to reveal the color of the wood, whether it's pine or oak or uh, walnut or whatever it is, that could be your core material. Another thing that's been added with voxel painting, and, and this, is, this is something that um, I was really excited to see come in, 
is that now you can in the vox in the voxel space you can now paint with color like you can paint colored voxels which means that you can use your smart materials and now i can pick a smart material and let me if you click on the smart material twice it'll open up your smart material editor but it'll also throw you back into the paint room so let's go back into the sculpt room and you just click your paint material or your smart material once and that's going to select the material you're going to paint with so we'll pick this uh this like red rock material and now as i'm actually sculpting um, we'll remove the box hide now i want to actually add geo so as i now as i'm painting i'm actually painting this smart material on top in the voxel space i can pick i can go to any of the voxel um let's grab some wood and paint some wood so you're actually just working the way you would work with your um in your paint room you're applying it to voxels anyway have a go with it play around with it it's it's pretty amazing i've done some really cool stuff with it um, i just wanted to keep this video nice and short hopefully you guys get a chance to jump in and try it out all right well thanks for watching